The number of hip arthroplasties performed at Rush Presbyterian St. Luke's Medical Center in Chicago is one of the highest in the world. Numerous studies have been conducted and published from the Department of Orthopedic Surgery's patient database. The most recent study, Cementless Acetabular Reconstruction After Acetabular Fracture, will be published in the June issue of the Journal of Bone and Joint Surgery. Doctors Richard A. Berger, Joshua J. Jacobs, and Jorge O. Galante were selected to participate in this VJO JBJS video supplement to their article. I think it's important to understand that this article really says nothing about whether acetabular fractures should be treated open or should be treated closed. That's really not the point of the article. I think that there are many times when it's appropriate to treat them open, there are many times when it's appropriate to treat them closed, and there's some times when you'd like to treat them open because of various circumstances you can't. <clears throat> However, this just simply goes on to outline some of the problems you have with a patient who had previous acetabular fracture. What we have come to realize more recently in the last uh, decade or so is that as we apply the technique of uh, uh, hip reconstruction to more demanding patient populations, uh, patients that are more active, patients that are younger with longer life expectancies, uh, is that with time the fixation on the pelvic side, on the acetabular side, with bone cement has been disappointing in many surgeons' hands. The role of cement is debatable at best. Uh, some authors uh, have reported good results, uh, good long-term results. Uh, some others have not. To some extent, there's a great deal of, uh, if you want to, variability. And it's hard to get your finger as to what the origin of that variability might be. My own perception is that it is much more difficult to create an environment that is ideal for cement in the acetabulum that it is in the femur. It's harder to get consistently, and, and the main thing is in a reproducible fashion, to get a cavity that is closed, to be able to pressurize cement and to get a dry feel. We have the center of the femur outlined here, top of the greater trochanter here, and this is about where the vastus ridge is. We're going to make an incision about an inch proximal from the top of the trochanter, and we go about a half inch anterior, and we take that straight down back to the midline of the femur just past the vastus ridge, so our incision looks just like this. It's just cheating a little bit anterior, but it's almost a straight lateral incision. I've taken down gluteus minimus and the reflected head, and as you can see, there's very little blood, blood loss if you stay in the avascular plane. Now, the last thing I'm going to do is put the leg back on the table here <clears throat> and just open the capsule up. And we're going to do that by keeping a little bit of the capsule attached to gluteus minimus up top. And then we're going to do this externally rotate the hip just a little bit. Good, just a little bit, good and take down a big capsular piece. And that's a large piece of capsule that we have taken off here. So right here you can see the acetabulum quite nicely. As you can see, the anterolateral approach, you get excellent exposure. You can see the entire brim of the acetabulum all the way around, and you really have a straight shot. You can see the cotyloid fossa here with the medial wall a few millimeters medial to that. It's important, I think, particularly with an acetabular fracture, to get down to the medial wall. We'll start with a small reamer and ream down straight medial to the medial wall. This is now the final reamer that I believe I'm going to use. This is a 50 reamer. We're going to ream all the way down to the medial wall again, making sure we have very good coverage. You should have reamed all the way, all the way down, and this is reamed all the way down medially. We're going to set this to 15 to 20 degrees of antiversion and 45 degrees of abduction. We're also going to check our native acetabulum so it's mir mirroring the native acetabulum something that you really can't do well if you have a complex primary with acetabular distortion. So 
So we countersink the 13, as you can see here. And we'll remove the 13, and that means a 14 can go in. And we template it to a size 15, which should be about a size 15, so that means there'll be a 14, 15, or 16. Stem gets a proximal fit in the metaphysis. So what happens is it goes down to about a centimeter before it seats, about here very, very easily, and then it starts getting harder and harder. You can hear the sound change. I think you can see, as we're done, that except for a little bit of the muscle being beat up proximally where the Charlie pin, pin was and just spread open, that the entire muscle is closed back down quite nicely.